So if you've been following along with the B to 51 project, you know that one of the things I wanted to do with this one is experiment with new things. And one of the new things I wanted to try was programming um, a receiver. There's two things that really scare me the most in this hobby. And one is uh, flying warbirds off grass because, well, I haven't had the best luck and not a lot of experience. Hence the entire project was building the plane for that reason. The second thing was um, programming a receiver. Uh, they've always intimidated me. I've uh, always been flying bind and fly. And if I have been buying a PNP plane, I stick a receiver out of a bind and fly in it and just hope for the best. So far I've been very lucky, but that's kind of a scary thing to hope to always get right. So I took this opportunity to try out Spectrum's brand new AR637T uh, receiver. You can see it mounted right there inside my uh, P51. It's about the same size as the AR636. Um, but I was very scared on, on programming it because like I said, it's something I've never done before and it's always intimidated me. Um, I had no trouble with it <laughs> when it came down to programming. I, there's a whole series of videos that Spectrum has put together out on their website, on their YouTube page, I mean, and they are fantastic. Um, you follow along and unlike other previous receivers, you program the 637T using your transmitter. Um, you do. You can use the uh, the wire, the USB adapter to plug it into your computer to get the uh, serial number to register it and do a firmware update. But after that, you put that off to the side. You're going to be using forward programming, which is their new way of programming receivers. I had to do a firmware update to my DX6, and when I did that and I bound to the airplane, instantly I have a new menu option called forward programming. I was able to enter that follow the steps and set up the receiver as well as set up AS3X. I went without safe um, because honestly, I don't really have enough channels for it anyway. Which brings me to one issue that I did have and luckily I found a workaround. If you are flying a six channel aircraft like this P51 here and you want to use all six channels and you have a DX6 with only six channels and a 637T, uh, there's a couple issues. You really need two additional channels on your transmitter if you want to use AS3X. The reason is, is with the two extra channels, you are allowed to turn AS3X on and off and maybe have like a, an off setting, a mid gain setting and a high gain setting. And you can use the knob or a slider to adjust the gains for the aircraft. So that's an awesome way to tune the airplane and make sure you get it dialed in just perfectly. Now, if you have a six channel plane, a six channel receiver and are using the 637T with uh, AS3X, um, that combination runs you out of channels pretty quick. So unfortunately for me, I had to lock in the gains um, for the AS3X and kind of hope for the best. So. I went with, um, I reduced the gains down from the factory defaults. I will fly the aircraft and see how it does. And I can slowly advance them uh, from there, but I can only advance them on the ground. I can't advance them in the air or take, turn them down in the air. So if the airplane starts to oscillate, I have no choice but to fly it that way until I get it back down to the ground. If you're flying a four channel plane with a DX6 with the, with the 637T, you have no problem because you have additional channels to make that all work. So I had to get a little creative on, on how to handle that. They don't really talk about that too much in the videos. Um, so if you are setting an airplane up like I am, you want to be sure you're using the fixed settings for the gyro instead of adjustable because you don't have the channels to make it adjustable if you continue to want to use flaps, retracts, and a sixth channel. So another great reason that when you come to buying a transmitter, Always buy one with more channels than you think you'll ever need. I thought, why would I ever need any more than six channels? I could never fly a plane with more than six things to do. Well, um, you find out later that, uh, in fact, I probably should have got a DX8 or a DX9, which is on my, uh, I'm going to put that on my Christmas list, uh, even though we're six months away from that. So uh, you can see some of the limitation there, but I was able to work through it just fine. And um, I should be able to use the 637T with the P51, with my DX6, with AS3X. The setup on that was really, really easy. I would not have any problems recommending anyone who's never programmed a receiver to try out the 637T. 
It intimidated me, and once I got into it, you go, this is way easier than I ever imagined it being. The forward programming walks you through, it prompts you to do things, it asks you to do stuff, you do it, you tell it you did it, and it understands what to do. It sets the orientation, it knows what to do with the servos, it understands what to do next. So it's a fantastic, great way to get into programming a receiver with a lot less risk involved. And the idea that you can tune it in the air is fantastic as long as you have the open channels to do so. So I'll be looking forward to updating my radio in the future and kind of giving me some more capabilities. Um, but otherwise, yeah, for being completely scared and not wanting to take a chance at programming a um, receiver, the 637T didn't give me any issues at all. And now I know I have the confidence that I can program one in the future. And honestly, that opens the door to a whole bunch of other aircraft and gives me the opportunity to take this and stick it into another let's say an e-flight aircraft that I want to tune or do something else with. So great way to get involved in programming. And um, it's, you know, for the price of it too, the other thing is, is when you look at the 636s out of a uh, bind and fly, they range anywhere from uh, about 50 to $75 used, uh, but it's questionable on the history of them. And you can see those go for um, about $100 on, on eBay uh, new. It's $100 for the 637T, it's brand new. You know you're getting a genuine thing because you're getting it from Horizon Hobby and it's easy to set up and program and you are using the latest generation receiver. And that forward programming, it works fantastic. No more extra cables and apps and things to connect to. You can do it at the field right with the equipment that you already have today. So I highly recommend uh, using that if you uh, want to get into uh, programming. Once again, if you guys have any questions at all, please, uh, leave your, uh, your comments below and I'll be more than happy to uh, do my very best to answer them for you. Thanks again.